Welcome back. You're watching Big Deal and we are discussing the new era of regulations of social media in the country. So Tejasi, you were making some very interesting and important legal points. I want to understand the new introduction of this GAC that has been proposed by the government. How is that going to be legally tenable, especially when it's a government committee? And how do uh, the other developed um, you know, countries deal with this issue? Are they autonomous with more powers to an advisory body or an appellate body to really take into cognizance the customer's grievances? Thank you, Nisha, for raising this, because honestly, I think we do need to spend some time on discussing the concerns around the GAC's legal basis. So firstly, it is a settled principle that any adjudicatory body, such as the GAC, which essentially is settling disputes between parties, can only be constituted by the legislature. And here, there has been no law that's been enacted by the parliament empowering the executive to do so. So the constitutionality of the GAC itself is a question here. And the IT amendment rules are an amendment to the IT rules, which is a delegated legislation and not a statute that's been passed by the parliament. Also, it's important to note here that any rule that's notified by the executive, such as the IT rules, must be traceable to its parent act. And in this case, it's the IT Act 2000. However, the IT Act does not contemplate appointment of any such committee. So there is no legislative basis on which the union government has the power to create such a body. And on top of that, given that it's a government appointed body, as you rightly mentioned, it has it can have immediate and far-reaching impact on citizens' fundamental rights uh, that do with little to no procedural safeguards built into the scheme of, of IT rules itself. Um, in terms of the developments around, across the world, one example I would like to bring here is Ofcom, which is the regulatory and broad, uh, competition authority in the UK, which is not in itself perfect, but is independent in its appointment and has a history of functioning and working fairly independently. Now, even if we look at um, some examples such as Singapore, which has an authority that regulates both communication and media sectors, uh, and also Turkey, which has a regulatory framework to moderate content on the internet, none of them have a government-appointed oversight mechanism, which makes bureaucrats arbiters of permissible speech on the internet, which is why, in my opinion, the creation of a GAC needs to be unequivocally criticized. Right. The GAC okay, Tejasi, you made your point. Uh, most of the uh, most of these agencies that you have mentioned across the world are autonomous in nature. I remember the evolution of Competition Commission of India. It gained in its power and teeth and became more autonomous as a body. Now, when we talk about CCI, uh, so that uh, what came as a shock for the entire uh, you know startup industry and the tech uh, digital world was also the recent CCI order on Google Play. How do we see the overall broad messaging on these kind of rulings now? No, I think Nisha, this uh, the so first of first of the particular ruling was actually greatly by the entire Indian startup uh, ecosystem itself. A number of them have actually been deplatformed by uh, by the Google Play Store. A number of them have seen a large amount of their revenue actually uh, actually been taken up by the Google Play Store itself, by the Google Play Store, and the inability to actually create any other alternate sort of payment uh, payment mechanisms or payment gateways has severely, severely inhibited these particular companies from operating on that particular ecosystem itself. I think the messaging from the government is actually quite clear in this regard. If you are a large tech monopoly, they're going to start treating you like like a utility company itself. So they are going to have very thick regulations around that to ensure that your monopoly position can't, can't end up being exploited at the uh, at the expense of either users or the expense of companies that are the, that you end up catering to as well. So I think from the from the government's actions and from the CCI ruling also, this is something that actually has global precedence as part of that. So I, I, I don't see India actually taking up a contrary stance in that particular part itself. And from the GSE perspective also, I think given the, the legality of the GSE is something that is something that we decided by the courts. But I think the intent of them therefore is very simple. If you are a monopoly, you can't, you can't, uh, uh, you can't abuse your particular power, you will actually end up being regulated as part of it. So the bigger you are, the greater the level of, uh, of regulatory scrutiny you will actually end up coming under as well. And not just for social media companies, but for e-commerce companies, for payment companies, to so NPCI, and for any other industry that uh, technology has actually pervaded into.
Right. Uh, yeah. So point made, uh, uh, Siddharth Pai, and we understand that every piece of the new age businesses are getting regulated, and the uh, you know regulatory bodies and the government is also evolving as the sector is evolving. But Ajay Rodi put some thought in uh, the larger perspective uh, that you have on the GSE formation. Uh, everybody has made their point, and Tejasi raised a very important point that it's not an autonomous body; it's going to be a government body. What is your view on overall uh, you know concept of a GAC and the way social media is getting regulated and on the other hand while Twitter is pushing the pedal on free speech at the moment we have seen various instances in India where because of your uh, leaning uh, either religious or political there have been some high-handedness by the authorities so, Nisha, I think the, uh, you know, one thing that we have to remember here is that the GSE is actually, in that sense, an appellate forum, which means it is the forum to which you take a grievance against a decision by the grievance officer. So it's not really the first uh, stage for anybody to approach if there are posts or if there are uh, material on social media that uh, you would want to complain against. Therefore, in that to that effect, if the intermediary is performing its function, the grievance officer is addressing the uh, grievances of the users, uh, you don't really end up before the GAC. That's, that's the first point. Therefore, uh, the government has also clearly stated that the GAC is coming in because at this point, they felt that uh, self governing through a governance officer, a grievance officer, was not really very effective because nobody had named uh, anybody worthwhile and that mechanism doesn't seem to have worked well in the last few weeks or months. It's a short time, but that's that's their view and that's the reason they have brought in the GAC. Of course, the GAC has two government appointed members. Interestingly, one of the sub rules give power to the GAC to actually seek assistance from anybody who's an expert in this field. So, you know, how that will play out, how will the GAC actually uh, uh, deal right. with these appeals? Uh, is something that we'll have to wait and see. All right, so it will evolve and intent is good, but how that power dynamics play out also needs to be seen very, very closely because it's also about fundamental rights as well as free speech. One bouncer question to end with, Siddharth Pai. Would you pay $8 uh, for your free speech on Twitter? No, not, not worth the price, honestly. If they do follow Google's playbook and have a lower price for India, Maybe, but $8 far too much. All right, so that's a big debate and everybody is telling them to come up with a different business model altogether to make money. But uh, thank you so much, Tejasi, Ajay, as well as Siddharth Pai for uh, joining us on this very interesting discussion. These are early days. Of course, this particular space is going to be very exciting with the free speech aspect, government control, as well as the control, as well as accountability of the tech intermediaries as well. So it's going to be very, very interesting and we'll all live and learn as this particular sector and the regulations around it really evolves with that. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Big Deal.